Hello, and welcome to another edition of the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week with me, Craig Barton. Now, one of the themes throughout this year of Resource of the Week is that I've tried to delve into the wonderful world of primary school resources. Because the more I learn about what goes on at primary school, the more I speak to primary school teachers, the more I'm lucky enough to visit, work with primary school teachers and work with students, the more blown away I am by the complexity of maths that goes on there. And in addition to that, the kind of routines that are in place that, that just mean that students just learn really, really effectively. They've got the basic skills, they've got the ability to discuss, work together cooperatively and positively and so on. It blows my mind. So I would be mental if I didn't try to borrow some of that expertise and then bring it into year seven and eight, because that's going to do two things. One, it's going to be sharing best practice. I'm going to be benefiting from something that works. But secondly, it's going to ease that transition from primary to secondary school because it's going to be using something that students are familiar with. So I discovered this resource here. Primary Mr. Andrew has created Maths Daily Practice Examples and Template. And I just think it's absolutely brilliant. And it's so brilliant that it's gone straight into our brand new year seven and eight scheme of work. So let me show you what it is. Um, files included. There's one file, but that's deceptive because that's a zip file. And when you download it, you actually get all these. Uh, and each Word document, has, the first one has one to six and it goes up to 71 to 76. There's flipping loads of these. So if I show you one to six, what it looks like, you'll see here that we've got uh, one page and on it, there are six daily practice sets of questions. So if we just take the first one here, daily practice one, you'll see that question one's addition, two is, uh, so written addition, I should say, two is written uh, subtraction, then we've got some written multiplication, written division, so you've got your four operations straight away at the top, then we're adding some fractions, bit of conversion, bit of place value, and then a bit of a twist, either order of operations it'll turn into, or kind of multiple operations as we go through. And if I just show you how this progresses, I've just picked out one from the middle, so 41. So you can see that the um, additions, subtractions, multiplications, and divisions get a bit more complicated. The numbers get bigger, decimals come into play. We've still got the fractions, still got the place value. Now we've got some powers, and now we'll start doing some um, operations with those fractions, multiplication and division. And then by the time you get to the end, you start to get things like this. So now look what we're doing here. Now we're multiplying mixed number fractions. We've got percentage of an amount, some pretty tricky long division. We've got some multiplication with decimals and so on. But the key thing is notice the structure. It's always the four operations at the top, always fractions, always place value, and then kind of twists as we go through. So first off, I think these are absolutely brilliant. Secondly, I'll tell you how we're using them. So we're having at the start of our year seven and eight scheme of work, we're calling it hashtag solar. S-O-L-A. And this is uh, my colleague Gareth Fairclough's idea. And he got this from primary schools that he's been visiting, where they do hashtag soda, start of the day activity. We've twisted it, start of the lesson activity. Innovative, right? So the idea is dead, dead simple. It's a starter. It's a starter that's on the board when kids come in or depending on the class, depending on the circumstances, it may be printed out as a little card on the desk for when kids come in. But the idea here is that kids will get one of these every single day throughout year seven, regardless of the, the rest of the content of the lesson, because this is focusing on fundamental numeracy skills. And whenever we talk with teachers about this, some teachers say, well, this is far too easy for my kids. They'll do it in 30 seconds. Well, I'll say two things to that. Firstly, brilliant. If they can, you're not losing a lot of your lesson and it's a great confidence booster. But secondly, don't make that assumption that they can do it because I've been guilty of that in the past. And then it turns out they can't flip and do it and they make mistakes in high test exams or something like that. So I just love the fact that these are ready prepared, ready, just ready to use straight out of the tin. You've got almost a year's worth of daily practice things here. Um, if you if you use kind of three a week or four a week or whatever, and it's really, really easy to build your own. So we're thinking now for year eight, we might adapt this and start to bring in some of the topics kids will have studied in year seven. So your ratio will come into play. Um, maybe some more complex powers or square roots, but possibly keeping it number based because I like the idea of number based. So a uh, percentage increase, maybe even a reverse percentage or something like that. 
And this just becomes a routine. I'm a great believer in routines and it just helps settle the kids, but it's got a purpose to it. It's useful to it for, for students as well. And they can see it build up. Parents are loving this because they can see that the start of every lesson is structured and focused and it's mathematics that they understand. So we're encouraging our kids to share these with the parents. Can parents do these nine? And it just gets kids talking about uh, mathematics at home. So I really, really like these for a structured start to the lesson. That's how we're using them. But perhaps you're using them in a different way. We can see here that primary Mr. Andrew, he's using it um, as lesson starters as well, but I'm sure there are lots of different ways to, to use them. And indeed, there's a blog post here dedicated, and I'll link to this um, uh, in the notes just below the video, where you can go to, to learn how primary Mr. Andrew uses these in his lesson and there's some great pictures and all that kind of stuff. So I just think these are a wonderful resource. So if you use them and if you download them, hop back onto this resource page and just share, uh, share your thoughts, how you've used them and make the note that you're a secondary school teacher because we can break down this divide between primary and secondary and start sharing good practice between, between us and it'll just be good for everybody. So I absolutely love that resource. Thanks so much for sharing that one. Um, and I'll be back with a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.